Hello and welcome out to this episode of Outbreak Gamers. I'm your host, David Anthony. Web Dave is my gamer tag. Yay. And of course, I am very fortunate to have with me tonight, Dealer. Dealer, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Web Dave. <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. Thanks, man. Thanks. Outbreak dude. Gamers. But it's a perfect. Yeah, let me get. Is that pandemic related? It better yeah. be. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, yes. Yeah, because it was, uh, you know, it's kind of when I had the idea of like, you know, going crazy. I need to do something. Mm -hmm. well, there we go. Start a podcast. Why not start podcasting? Why not? There you go. There you go. Uh, this this kind of series is basically kind of a, well, I say it, interviewing influencers in the gaming world. And I know you don't consider yourself an influencer, but, you know, with a large subscriber base to your YouTube channel, a lot of people tune in and, and you know, give a listen to what you have to say in your, in your, in your show. So to me. That kind of influences you, us a little bit. You know, bit. I, I get what you mean. And um, even Microsoft calls us influencers when they send us stuff, <laughs> which, you know, <laughs> I'm just not a fan of because it makes it seem like we are manipulating people. But, right. you know, I'm just, I'm just you know, giving my opinions and, and trying to be as uh, straightforward as possible. But I definitely get what you're, what you're getting at there. And, and I tell you, um, I do value your opinion a lot. That's why I tune in and, and listen. So uh, appreciate it. The show has been extremely enjoyable. So let's get this. Let's just get this started. Kind of the kind of the way I want to get this because a lot of people may watch your show, but they may not know a lot about you. I know sometimes over the course of the years that you you've done your show, uh, you know that things you know come up or little bits and pieces or tidbits. But and this is this is no way a big expose. This is just kind of a you know so so guess dealer. What uh, what kind of um, I guess jobs have you had in your life? Um, I've worked at the Salvation Army. I've worked at a museum. I've I've done landscaping. Wow. I've I've done a whole bunch of crap. And then I decided to to go to well to college and right out of high school. And from there, I ended up going to school for social work. A lot of people don't know that. Cool. Wanted to help people. Uh, yeah. You might not know because I call people fuckface sometimes. <laughs> but I I have a lot of good intent. Uh, to a lot of different people, maybe not just some on Twitter that don't actually watch what I say or know what I say and try to misquote me. Those people may or may not be fuck faces, but for the large <laughs> part, there's a lot of really cool people in this community. And uh, ultimately, I decided a couple years ago, hey, you know, uh, I'm going to put more. I started putting more work into this and mm -hmm. then I monetized my channel at 23,000 subscribers. And, you know, uh, from there, I just decided, hey, I'm putting a lot of work into this and I can make my own hours and i've got this amazing community behind me if, for some reason or another you know people end up watching what i put out there and um you know i, I i'm super thankful for that mm -hmm. and i and i also get to just uh like i said kind of work for myself uh in, uh, doing this so it's it's really it's really cool that's awesome that's awesome and you know uh, a lot of people enjoy i know myself i'll speak for myself 100 percent. that um you know enjoy the the content you bring um even you know some of the videos that you put out as well as your your podcast which is hugely popular um but i mean it's uh your take your your angle i guess on it you know your perspective that's even a better word uh that you that you that you bring uh to the gaming community and it's a lot of fun you know and you've 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 assembled a really good crew for your show which is awesome isn't that what it's, it's, it's really what it's all about yep. is, is fun. And, uh, I, I said this in my last show when we were talking about these guys that were yelling at the God of war creator for his take on Ragnarok and they had him on their show and they were yelling at this guy over an opinion. And, and I kind of went into how I feel like, you know, people put us up on a, on a, on a, a pedestal or a different standard in regards to what we should address or shouldn't address, like, should we even talk about these guys or, you know, but I, I still had to go in on these guys because I'm just, first and foremost, I'm, I'm, I do this because of my hobby, which is gaming. And I'm just a, an asshole with a microphone like anyone else. And I, I have my, you know, my thoughts on the good and the bad and the ugly. Right. So, uh, fun number one, keeping it real you know, is also right up there with it. That's why we call it Real Deal Xbox Podcast. Mm -hmm. It happened to work with the naming and, and what my intent was. And some people don't like that. Some people, um, you know, it, there are guys out there that if you say anything negative or honest, constructive criticism uh, with Xbox, 
you know, I put thousands of hours into this hobby. And even if I'm sitting here saying something like, look, I've provided a lot of content and some people may or may not appreciate that or, or enjoy it. But the second I ask Microsoft for something better, they will turn on you like this has happened. And it, I hate seeing that stuff, but nonetheless, we still try to keep it 100 percent on the podcast and just just straightforward feedback from Microsoft because somebody's got to do it. Not that we're the only ones. Everyone in our chat, for the most part, feels the same way. But that's really uh, where, where what I think is impo- kind of important with podcasts is, is, number one, you have fun. Number two, you got to be on a, you know, you got to be real with, with big, big companies like this because they don't owe, we don't owe them nothing. We owe them zero. We are the customer. And uh, at the end of the day, I'm going on a spiel that probably put half of uh, people it's listening to this uh, to sleep. But, but, but again, fun, entertainment, people show up for, for some kind of entertainment value. If you can provide knowledge on top of that or interesting perspective, uh, that's also pretty important. And the more of those things you can do, I think the more people you can keep engaged, which is, just so happens to be what we uh, end up doing, at least for a handful of people. Exactly, and and uh, you get you guys really, you nail it. You really do. Um, and I say you guys because, like I said, you do have a really good crew that works with you uh, on RDX. Um, let's uh, let's kind of step back a little bit. Uh, we're going to get back to the podcast and, uh, and and a lot more in that as well. But um, let's get back. Uh, let's get to some of your, I guess, <clears throat> origins in gaming, like. How did you get started in the gaming? What was your first experience in gaming today? Mm. That is a tough one. Uh, cool. It might be. <laughs> I, I know my grandma, you know, she's nice. not around anymore, but um, she had a an original Nintendo. And I'm pretty sure that's one of my earliest memories of even experiencing video games. But the first one that was, hey, this is mine and I can play it. Uh, I have no idea what happened to it, but it was a Sega Genesis, and I was pretty young, mm-hmm. and I couldn't believe that we got this thing because we were just dirt poor, right? Mm-hmm. It was. I found out that Santa Claus either looked a lot like my mom or <laughs> that uh, my mom was Santa Claus, right? And uh, we ended up kind of stumbling on them, throwing this thing under the tree, and uh, I remember playing Sega Genesis and just having so much fun with it. Again, I have no idea what happened to that thing. Later on, we end up uh, borrowing a Super Nintendo or something, and then I remember me and my brother chipped in for a PlayStation 1, and from there, um, yeah, I ended up somehow getting a, a PS2, and then I traded that in for an original Xbox, and then I just never looked back. You know, even though I've owned a PS3 at launch and a, a PS4 and, and a now PS5, mm-hmm. Xbox is, is first and foremost for me, always has been since the original, and uh now it's just the ecosystem, the friends list, the achievements, the games. It's just uh, what I prefer. Yeah, yeah, I, awesome, man. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, let, let me let's get to your, um, you know, with with Xbox, you have to create the gamer tag. So, how did you get to your gamer tag? I mean, obviously, you know, <laughs> dealer, and it's yours is a little unique. Being, you know, of course, you and, and I'll put it in the show notes so that everybody can can find you on there and stock you. I mean, find you. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm five. That's how. No, I mean, it was, uh, I think it was, man, online gaming used to be something that I used to think about and, and keep in mind, you know, I didn't have internet until I was, I don't even know, like what, 18. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't even know. You know, I mean, it was, it was something that I had always thought about and be like, holy crap, wouldn't it be so cool if you could play command and conquer with your friends or any kind of online shooter with your friends. It was a magical, mystical thing that I just never experienced. And it's part of the reason why I kind of fucked myself over uh, at the beginning of college. You know, I chose to do that more than anything. And I, I kind of learned the hard way and doubled back and, and kind of fixed all those mistakes. But online gaming was, it was always this thing that I had held up in my mind is something just so extraordinarily cool because you're connecting with real people and you're playing video games together. And, uh, yeah, I guess I ended up creating the gamer tag Death Dealer, Death 05 Dealer or Death 5 Dealer, one of those, mm-hmm. I don't know, and then they kept calling me one or the other, and then I chose, uh, and it makes no sense for YouTube or any kind of platform reason, <laughs> but uh, I kept it because I figured the content would stand and, and kind of talk for itself, and if people liked it, they could subscribe, but um, yeah, dealer is the thing that i chose and i'm like hmm, let me stick the word gaming on it like everyone else in the universe 
and uh, we'll go ahead and just build some content and see who sticks around. Well, there you go. There you go. So, so on your on your um, gamer tag, you have some letters before. Was it just dealer already taken, or what? How did you? How did you come? Death out of dealer was tag? definitely already taken. So that's right. probably why it was. It might have been death X five X dealer. I don't even remember. I mean, this is a while ago. You <laughs> right, know, this right, is right. a while ago. But um, you know, hey, I thought about getting definitely a new logo and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But. Uh, that requires reaching out and dealing with a lot of messages and a bunch of stuff that I just, right now, I just don't, I can't do it. I just don't right. feel like doing it personally. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, hey, if you guys know any cool artists that got any kind of rebranding logo ideas, let me know. Have them send them to me. There you go. There you go. Well, I, I love your logo. I think it's cool as hell. So, yeah. you know, Daily Gaming looks cool. And then, of course, the, you know, Grim Reaper with the with the cards. Mm-hmm. So do you, do you play cards? <laughs> uh no (laughs) (laughs) no those cards have uh xbox ip on them so uh uh, well that one has the xbox logo on it but the original logo uh i had a similar one to this it just wasn't as good it had like the forza logo on one and the halo logo on another and the gears logo on another it was you know like the xbox's hand of games and this is at a time where they didn't even have any games so it was great (laughs) Yeah. You know, it worked, but uh, you know, this is just an updated version that I found out was probably partially stolen on Google. It was great, so you know. <laughs> well, I'd say everybody, everybody knows you now. I mean, <laughs> somewhat. You know, well, dealer, you know, when you say dealer, you you know who you're talking about. <laughs> that crazy motherfucker, that dealer. crazy motherfucker, <laughs> that guy that says what he thinks and is kind of reasonable. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, again, it's logo. Uh, I'm I'm definitely kind of looking at. Something maybe a little bit different, more Xbox oriented going forward, maybe revamping in a little bit. Oh, it's always yeah. good to be fresh and refresh things. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I mean, like I said, I think you got the, you know, you've you got the name established, so that's definitely something. And and RDX, you know, most people know what that is. I guarantee everybody that's that's watching this is going to know, and hopefully more people will learn about you and your channel from watching this as well. It's that's the goal, kind of get the you know spread it around a little bit. Although, you, like I said, you, you're definitely quite popular, <laughs> which is a good thing. Uh, not, you know, there's a there's a surprising amount of dealer gamings or dealer gamers out there. I don't know. Right. There weren't this many when I started, and I don't <laughs> know what are the odds that people choose the same thing. But uh, if you go on YouTube, there is a surprising amount of channels that, and I think they're from different regions. Hmm. But uh, there's a surprising amount of channels that have, have, have similar names to mine now. It's weird. Try, trying to emulate you? or maybe, I don't know, but I know some yeah. of them also have Reaper logos. So probably a little, <laughs> maybe one or two of them. Yeah, uh, there you go. Well, there's, there's only one, and we've got him here tonight. <laughs> yeah, there you go, uh, dude. Again, like I said, I do appreciate your time tonight. So let's um, let's talk about, uh, I guess, how long have you, have you had... Um, so, so was, was, uh, RDX your first, you know, show or have you built your channel influence up from there? Oh yeah, I did it. And that's the way I, I kind of tell everybody, Mm -hmm. uh, to do it. I've done a few of these interviews and the reason RDX was my first podcast. I decided to start because I, you know, some of the other shows I was, I was doing, you know, are kind of compromised, right? If you want to put it that way, Mm -hmm. or it was, um, you know, some of the guys on there were just not, uh, they were basically just not able to keep it, keep it real, in my opinion. Right. And, you know, and it is what it is. Everyone went the way they went and did the things they did. Uh, I ended up starting this show about five years ago now. And I did that. I, I didn't initially want to do it, but I kept getting asked to start a podcast or do another podcast. And I decided to start this one. But I only did that because I already had a channel built up at that time anyway of about 12,000 subscribers i guess mm-hmm. and i was already building videos every other week or every week maybe of uh, more consumable content and i already had some guys that were rocking out with me right checking out my stuff and i was like okay well enough of these guys are asking me to do a show uh, i'm going to do a show that like every show is going to start out like trash and hopefully get better over time <laughs> and um you know we we had a good support base i think the first episode we had 500 people watching live which wow. is really cool. Yeah, uh, is. And again, I credit that to the fact that I had already built up a platform of people that happened to, you know, may or may not have 
given a crap to learn more about what our thoughts were uh, in more depth, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess you, you know, obviously you've, you've built it up now to where you have a pretty big subscriber base. I really didn't, I didn't know that he'd been doing this for five years. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'll have to dig back through some of the archives, I guess. <laughs> Most of those are still up there. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> every episode, there's actually a playlist. Nice. Nice. Yep. Um, so I guess, and I know over the years in the five years, you've had um, some different members come in and out. <clears throat> Sorry. Is there anybody, um, I guess that's, um, that's kind of like started with you that, um, you know, that maybe you wish was still around or maybe, you know, it's like, well, they've gone on to do other things or. Mm, um, I mean, honestly, I've had to let, um, a few people go and I hate doing that. And that's why <laughs> right. I always uh, encourage people not to, to rush filling a podcast position. Right. Because it fucking sucks having to tell somebody, look, you are you are arguing with everybody and you cannot let well enough be well enough. You can't agree to disagree and you're just arguing with everybody. You're cutting people off. I mean, I I hate doing that shit. Right. Uh, But I've had to do it a few times. Um, The people that were originally part of the show, one of them still there. Uh, Another one had recently left about, I don't know, eight months ago or so. Cold Eastwood, Mm -hmm. he was on there from the beginning. Sure, you uh, kick him off? I'm just kidding. No, I, I did not kick him off. <laughs> uh, but, you know, hey, I told him, hey, you know, it's about that you're kind of burnt out, brother. Like, I'd rather, <laughs> I need somebody who has some more energy that cares about the topics a little more. And he needed a little break and to do his own thing. And that's what yeah. we got to do is, is people is keep moving sure. and keep doing what makes us happy, right? But right. Uh, Fonzarelli's still there. He's an original member. Uh, and aside from that, I've, yeah, uh, Luca was there. The Ashton Luca was there, but she had some schooling stuff going on at the time. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, we've had to replace a few people and i feel like every time it's come forward and evolved in the right way and you know as a host that's your job to kind of build off and build that chemistry and that's number one to me is getting because i could have had people with larger followings like i've had a lot of messages from people with plenty of subscribers that maybe could have brought more but that's never what we were after we were after building the right chemistry with the right sense of humor like if you're not if you don't have a sense of humor and you don't actually play games, you know. I mean, <laughs> I even get my own panel shit sometimes when, that you know, deep. some of them are like, what are y'all even playing? Are you buying this game? <laughs> you know, we all do that and kind of give each other shit. But gaming is number one, and you've got to have a sense of humor and, and the right chemistry with the right people. Or else, what's the point of watching? Because there's a billion people that do this, and yeah. there's what's the point? If, if everyone's monotone and, and doesn't have fun, and they're not comfortable with each other, and don't, don't know how to feed off of each other, that comes with time and experience, and, and uh, if, you, if you end up lucking out long enough and doing this long enough, you learn how to bounce off each other more and more and better and better. You know, So that's, that's mm-hmm. kind of super important to me, and uh, usually I won't bring people on the show. A lot of times, unless I'm hanging out with them in Xbox parties and I actually know who they are and yeah. if they're actually a good fit for even a guest spot in a lot, in a lot of cases. Yeah, I, I, um, I'll say this. I, I know you've had... Uh, recent episodes uh you had uh pong so who you've played with who yep. who uh just jumped in and i think he's done a great job when he fills in for you he does um and um but he is he is notorious for his uh his long outros for his uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah when we give him shit pong. for that that's all fun too you know we yeah, just have exactly. fun with it how many podcasts you doing for the 27th <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, you know, he, he plays along with it, too. That's yeah. the best part. If he can roll with the punches, man, that does yeah. so much for oh. everybody. Oh, man. Uh, and, and, like, um, I think, I mean, well, Fonzarelli, I think, is, an, is, is he's, a, he's a rare breed. And, and he, he brings, like, look, this time. That's what she said. Like, that kind of stuff to your show, right? <laughs> I, know uh, he does I don't know. I don't, I don't know if he does. Stuff. Oh, you I mean the soundboard that. stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he'll, uh, I know he does, he does all that kind of stuff too. And it's some, sometimes when he, when he drops something there, it's just like, oh my God, it's so perfect. <laughs> and, uh, it's just so he like, has eight arms, you know, and they're all on different buttons, you know, depending on what's happening. Yeah. 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 And then, uh, and then, uh, Zocker, man, he's, uh, he is really good. I, uh, I like his, he's his individual content that he puts out as well. I, I watch all that. And, um, I mean, you know, like I said, you've got a really good, diverse uh group you've got uh was it um d-batch <laughs> d-batch 
I tell you, and and and, and I know if he ever watches this, don't be mad at me. But the first time I ever heard somebody say his name, I thought he said D bag. <laughs> every time I hear it, I'm just like, oh. uh, what are you? What are you thinking, D bag? <laughs> I might. I'm not actually calling that this upcoming show. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna come after me. And then we got uh, uh, Tim Dog, the Best yes, Buy Tim stalker. Dog. Yes, yeah, yeah, himself. And uh, you know, sometimes he's there and and uh, capable of speech. So that's that's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out to Tim. There you go. Shout shout out to everybody that's uh, that's part of the crew. <laughs> so, uh, so, so is there any? I mean, I guess um, was there anybody that you? Um, um, I, mean, you, I guess you, you said you kind of you, you like to like, uh, play games with them first, maybe interact with them first before you is for you get them on the show. Um, is that is that like, um, you know, is that like your, your ritual kind of thing or is that uh, is that just something you found that's the best way to, to make sure that people are going to fit your format? No, I just uh, if I if I'm not if I'm not at least capable of being friends with you. Yeah, then I don't care to hear you on my show you know just to be honest right yeah, um of course. i'll have certain people on uh if i think it's an opportunity to gain perspective uh you know i've had people on that mm, well no i can't say that i've kind of liked everyone i've had on there um <laughs> but i have had people on there that i haven't really played game like michael pactor or c- certain other people mm-hmm. that i haven't played games with but i knew that i'd be able to gain a lot of perspective from somebody like uh, michael pactor and that show didn't do the greatest numbers or anything, but it was still really cool to hear his thoughts and to really learn how fucking smart that guy is and how people take him out of context constantly, (laughs) even with the Sony won't exist as we know them in 10 years. You know, you'd be surprised how many people just didn't mention part of that quote and acted like he said Sony wouldn't exist in 10 years. Even people like Destin Gary that, you know, still write off the IGN thing and build their platform off that just ignored the the is we know them part which he is absolutely correct on we've seen them bring their games to pc we've seen them say Mm -hmm. they're going multi-platform we've seen them buy publishers for reasons that you would never thought they would buy publishers for or or developers rather like bungie Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean my pactor is absolutely right and the fact that he can't even be quoted correctly Mm -hmm. is insane to me but in his defense, he does say, hey, I don't get paid to do this. This is all for fun. I'm a web right. bush analyst. I don't fucking predict uh, video game Christmas, you know? I mean, but he has, he has fun with it, and he lets it all Great roll off his that. back, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, have you ever had Hogue Law on? Uh, no, I don't think well, I've ever okay. talked to Hogue. Okay, I, I just didn't know, because I know he's a, the lawyer-type perspective, and it just... Uh, um, yeah, Pactor be- brought him up. Yeah, they're both lawyers, he said, something like there that. There you go, there you go. So... Uh, Sorry, I wasn't trying to. Hey, I'll watch a lot of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. But yeah, playing playing games and hanging out like to uh, me, to me, man, I I don't do this. I mean, so I've seen people talk about the show and they've compared it to other shows. And I actually did this kind of recently for the first time. And mm-hmm. people describe my show as, as as friends hanging out, you know, but with orderly topics. Yeah, and uh, just a, a light sense of humor that is a little bit zany. And they're first and foremost to kind of be fun, but others don't prefer that. They prefer the corporate kind of, you know, fucking robot shit. And that's not what I'm about. And I, I say it myself all the time. Hey, it's not for everyone. This is for people that want to, want to maybe laugh and hear Mm -hmm. dumbass jokes about, uh, shit that may not be appropriate, but (laughs) that's what I say. I'm, I'm an independent creator and, uh, I'm not trying to appease microsoft executives or anyone else i don't care if any guest doesn't want to come on the show because of something i've said or something they think about me or a joke that i've made i'm going to uh say what i think and i'm going to uh you know try to roll the show how i think it should be rolled and it hasn't stopped xbox from bringing people onto the show like greenberg mikey bar Kari austin uh, major nelson i mean it, it hasn't stopped any of that and a lot of these guys are stuck in this box they think and maybe they just want to be this way they want you know they're in this box of i have to be a good little boy and i have mm-hmm. to present a very uh fucking cardboard like presentation right. to appease these developers or these executives and i'm telling you right now if you are forcing that you're really shooting you're, you're blowing your own toes off on a 357 magnum <laughs> right. it's in the long run you're just I, I can't see it being sustainable for anyone you got to be yourself 
you got to have fun with it and not worry about what these people think. And if you are worried about uh, being guilty by association or you think that they're going to see you uh, saying something or acting a certain way, you know, I get there's limits on everything. And I know I'm fucking rambling right now, but there's no, I, I just think it's something I see a lot, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that people are so afraid to step out of their little boxes or, or do things a different way or be themselves. Cause not everybody ha- can be this robotic. Like there's, a reason that the show stands out and that yeah. people tune in, I think. And it's, it, it, there's a, it can't be that everyone else is fucking robots. Right. It, it has, some of these guys have to have a sense of humor and an actual personality, but instead they're stuck in a TV presenter mode where right. we can't even get to know them. And to them, maybe that's a great thing. But to me, I'm not watching anything like that because right. there is no individuality to that. And you yeah. are afraid to go out on a limb to do or say anything. And in my opinion, there's too much of that shit in the world already. And uh, you know what? That's uh, thank you for tolerating that just now. Oh no, no, <laughs> Dude, I, t- I tell you, that's uh, you really you hit it on the head because your show is unique. Um, and what I like about it is that it's not like everybody else's show and you know there's a i guess a place obviously because they you know they get viewers too for for you know for different kind of shows uh i think i'm pretty fortunate that uh, i get to uh, be a panel member on uh, boom's show the breakfast with boom mm-hmm. uh he has a very nice structured format and that's the way he likes to run a show and i love it because i can just you know give my opinion go to the next topic and go on yeah. and i like being a part of it then that's cool you know, but your show is very entertaining. I mean, I I don't miss it. <laughs> I think Boom offers a lot more of his own opinions than a lot of the people I'm talking about too. You know, yeah, Boom yeah. does. Um, whether or not you agree, disagree with any one of us anywhere on this whole community, you know, I think Boom definitely at least gives more of himself to the show yes. than some of the people I'm talking about. Of course, of course um, yeah. And and oh, Boom yeah. is super consistent. You know, the guy would be in the middle of fucking brain surgery and not miss a show. <laughs> Exactly. You know, exactly. Uh, I know Boom. I've been talking to him for years. I, I actually need to do a show here soon. But, uh, yeah, man, I mean, honestly, with the whole doing the show and coming on and having doing – oh, shit, my alarm's coming That's off. Right. Super f- professional fuck That's up okay. there. But, um, <laughs> yeah, doing the show, coming on, all that stuff, man, I just pay attention to who's, uh, who's actually engaged in the show right. and – if we mesh, then I, you know, I think that, that that's someone I can bounce off of and feed off of as a host. Right. Because if I can't feed off of what the energy you're putting out and I don't think you're genuine or anything like that, you know, I, I, that's just stuff important to me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it shows. And, uh, I mean, I think it's, you know, you care about, I mean, we'll, we'll back it up and say the product you put out. But I mean, when it comes down to it. I mean, you, know, you put out a show and you want it to be entertaining because you want people to, uh, you know, to enjoy the, you know, the show, that's, the stuff that you put out. So, you know, so you want to, you know, obviously you don't want it to, like you said, go off the rails or if people are just yelling at each other, you know, that's not funny. That's not good content. You know, occasionally, you know, a little bit of chaos, <laughs> exactly. but, you know, it's got to be, it's got to be from a place of real passion and it's got to right. be um, a little bit it's got to have uh, a light at the end of the tunnel, you know, mm-hmm. definitely. Nobody wants to sit there and listen to just eight guys talking over each other or, you know, even having to panel members with dog shit uh, mics on top of not even caring about anything they're talking about. You know, I notice all that stuff. And, uh, you know, it's not the host fault per se, but at a, at a point you do got to step up and realize as a host – Maybe Billy with the fucking Fisher Price microphone that doesn't really <laughs> seem to care about any topic or on really. Right. Maybe he can be better off not on the panel. We can use the guys we got and get more out of them because there, surely there's more in each of these guys. Or we can yeah. replace him with somebody who actually cares about the stuff we're talking about. Right, right, and 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 that you have your you know your ear and your eyes open to that. I mean, is uh, I mean it's probably why you got such a huge following, you know, and you built up you know the show like it is because. You know, people do enjoy your content or they wouldn't continue to come back. And uh, I guarantee if you ever missed the show, it'd probably be all hell to pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we missed a few and uh, it surprises me. But honestly, it's like uh, it's it, it raises my spirits when I when I see some of that stuff, because I'm like, man, these guys really do. You know, 
to do enjoy the show that much where they notice when there's when there's not an episode or when we're late or whatever you know so right. i just uh, the guys that, that watch the show man i wouldn't give them up for the world yeah and that's awesome and that's good you know because you you care about your your fans and, you know and that's what they are whether you want to whether you want <laughs> yeah i was about to say i, I don't know. even like calling them that <laughs> <laughs> supporters yeah the guys supporters. that watch the show exactly yeah there you go fans but no, I'm just kidding. but uh so let's uh let's uh let's i guess let's let's talk a little gaming since i got you here get some of your reviews and inputs on um you know what do you think about the the current climate of gaming and and you know where you want um obviously xbox is your uh, is your your main focus so what uh, you know what what are you looking forward to this year and maybe what uh, what are your hopes you know that uh, the the things that might happen you know, or get announced maybe this year. Well, you know, obviously you, you may have be privy to some information that, that you can't give out. And I understand that. And that's not what I'm not trying to dig that out of you. Please don't take it that way. I just did, but I know there's some certain topics that you might be able to touch on that maybe you want to uh, talk about now. I'm looking forward to seeing four as a motorsport. Um, I've been really wanting to play a motorsport game. Horizon is great, but I'm more into the simulation racing. Right. Uh, so when that gets revealed, it's going to it's going to blow people's minds. I've already seen some stuff from this game. Uh, nice. It's it, it's um it's going to be one of the the first forays into you know Microsoft really pushing the damn box that they still haven't pushed yet, mm-hmm. and also things like Starfield, like everyone else, Gotham Knights. Um, I am looking forward to that game. I am just looking forward to games coming out uh, on a on a regular basis again because, as we all know, over the last couple of years, you know, hey, things have been a little wonky. So yeah. thank God for things like Mass Effect uh, Legendary Edition, which I just finally completed all three of those games today. Um, you know, the last one of the three today, and running right. through those again for the second time. Those are such a reminder of what I, I was thinking, like, how do these guys do this? Um, how do they build these games in a couple of years? And <laughs> they're such high quality yeah. and they built these games in a couple of years and they just came out whack, whack, whack. And, and I'm thinking like, where the fuck are all these games at right now? Like Hargy, my buddy Hargy, he's, you know, he's got a, a point to a large degree where it seems like games just, aren't coming out but i also understand to say that with the full context of the pandemic and everything's been happening i have no doubt that gotham knights would have already been out and that a lot of other games would have already been out if not for that i think that pushed microsoft's whole portfolio back at least a year you know right. so uh yeah i'm just ready to play some of these big games man starfield forza motorsport gotham knights and whatever else uh, a lot of these guys reveal yeah um i'm with you do you do you think there's going to be a summer showcase of some kind no of course there's yeah okay i mean obviously there's no e3 but if you had a rough guesstimate or estimate do you think it's going to be before august do you think we'll get some more information on stuff like this oh i mean i think everyone knows that yeah definitely before august cool good deal so um are you um looking forward um i mean i i know you're you're well let me backtrack because I know you're big into racing and you, especially when Forza came out, you talked about a lot on your show about your builds and stuff that you've done in the, I guess the, like the car tweaking. Is that the right? tuning? Yeah. Tuning, tuning. Sorry. <laughs> you know, we're no, no. Here. I mean, you're, yeah, you had it close enough. Yeah. I just yeah, figured I'd help you. Tuning. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm big into the builds and putting builds yeah. on the cars and uh, then tuning those builds. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is there some, um, that was a dumb question, I guess. But like uh, in Forza, you have you've uploaded some of your builds, I guess. Is that something people could go in and actually download builds that you've done? Yeah, uh, like Horizon Five, uh, like in my Forza Horizon review. Uh, the sucky thing about that was I was kind of forced to run through that game in a little over a week when right. Microsoft sent it to me for review, and I had a week to basically get through everything. And uh, that didn't leave me as much time to tune as I would have liked. So right. in my review, like I'm releasing the review before the game comes out, and I'm like, hey, if you want to find these cars in this video, you know, type in RDX in the description for the cars that you might see here and there. And mm-hmm. I just didn't have the time to tune 
a lot of quick because that's how i play forza you know that's how i get my review off on forza is i i learn how the cars feel the differences the sounds um the tire modeling what the cars feel like with what compounds and how tuning can bring out the most in each of those things even the way that boost builds on the centrifugal supercharger over a twin turbo setup is dramatically different just like real life and yeah. for different builds I would have different forced induction. There's, take long story short, it takes a long fucking time to build tunes for <laughs> each of these cars in yeah. multiple setups. Uh, so I didn't get the chance to tune as many cars as I would have wanted in Horizon Five uh, before the game came out. So you can find some kind of somewhat done cars, somewhat done tunes uh, in Horizon Five right now. But uh, motorsport, I'm going to probably be tuning. Well, I will be tuning much more than I did in Horizon 5 and, and kind nice. of uploading some of that. Nice. I look forward to that then, I'll tell you. That's, um, I, like I said, I love Ford uh, and I love cars. So so all right, let me ask you this. What um, what kind of car do you own in real life? Is that something uh, you can ask? I mean, I, I, guess, I guess. uh <laughs> you say a Pinto, I'm turning you off. A Pinto, I just explode in the background. <laughs> uh no i mean yeah. uh it's it's it, i'll just say it's a muscle car nice very you nice go. very nice well, i have a nissan uh, 370z 2015 model oh, uh, yeah. stock standard but i love hey, it you got Automatic, like three, 300 horse right. there right something like that yeah yeah, yeah. and uh it's that's, um fun that's enough to do a donut in or a burnout in I, i'll have to say you can do a burnout like <laughs> even if it's an automatic you can what's the uh, what's the insurance on that thing look like <laughs> it's actually not too bad uh mm. it was a lot better than my camaro was mm. so so yeah but then and at the time i had a daughter that was uh she was uh, 18 so yeah Whew, just because she was on her insurance not driving the car yeah <laughs> yeah so now that she's no longer i'm probably going to be looking at going back to the camaro let's i just like them i like yeah, them a lot yeah yeah modern american cars have come so far since since uh even 2010 uh when that bailout happened yeah and when guys retooled and got their shit up to snuff to compete with everybody on the, on the planet that was yeah. uh that was a turning point i think for uh general motors ford chrysler uh, but to, yeah, I mean, just a the product they've been putting out and competing with cars that are drastically higher priced in a lot of different areas. You know, long story short, America do good now, a lot better than they were. So if you've been dodging American cars since, yeah. uh, you know, because of some of the issues of 08 and before, you know, a lot of stuff's changed. Yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff's changed. Uh, they've definitely uh, um, upgraded. Well, I mean, really, they they had to to compete if, you know, if they were going to. Exactly. Going to be in the business, so and it's uh, I'm glad that they decided to wake up <laughs> and step up. Definitely. So, uh, so let's get back to a little bit of gaming. So, if you um, you're you, you do well, I'm sorry, you're podcasting about gaming. Um, you've been doing a lot of um, I guess with topics that just is it something that just like hits you? Is that when you make your own video, or is it just, or do you have like a kind of a roadmap of of things you want to cover or is it just kind of like as they as things come up then you'll make your you know, you'll drop a video hmm. sometimes sometimes you can be on fire on those videos which are pretty awesome <laughs> well the, it's a hundred percent inspiration based if it's going to have the skits and the jokes and the the magic baby stuff in it right like in my last yeah. video um i mean that's that's kind of uh it's a double-edged sword though you go through times where where you don't uh, you don't think stuff's worth talking about? You know, I could never sit there and take an article about how the Guardians of the Galaxy developer like Game Pass and talk about it for ten minutes or eleven minutes, right? Like YouTube wants me to. Uh, so to compensate for that, I try to find six, five, six topics and build a video around that that is worth your time. And mm -hmm. hopefully, you watch most of it. Maybe you don't, but ultimately, it's going to have uh, four to fourteen hours of work into it. And that's, you know, all the way down to multiple different tracks in the background to uh, the way that, uh, you know, I'm just trying to, I don't know, I'm just giving my take on, on a lot of the gaming topics out there that I get sent by people that watch my stuff. And again, you know, my thing is I want it to be at least worth watching. I want it to be worth your time. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to build 10 minute videos around a singular topic unless it is i haven't done that in ever i don't think i mean it's right. almost impossible for me because i 
I can sum things up very quickly, contrary to what you might see here. Uh, I can. I'm usually quite effective in how I explain things and sum things up. But uh, yeah, I'll try to. I'll try to make it worth your time. Fit fit four to five, six topics in a single video, and uh, just try to catch all the most interesting things that I find interesting. Anyway, over the past whatever, I only make one to two videos a week. I'm two if I'm lucky. And, um, yeah, a lot of that's because I wanted to make a video yesterday, actually. Uh, but I was like, fuck, there is literally nothing. I cannot, I cannot justify taking this bullshit and right. building a video around it because it's not worth a video. But that's also, like I said, a double-edged sword because I know that if I made that video, uh, people are still probably going to check it out. Or at least, you know, 30, 40,000 people yeah. probably will still check that out and it'll still get thousands of likes probably. And, and people might enjoy the video if I take the time to, like you said, sometimes be on it and uh, maybe make it funny or try to or, or make it worth watching. I don't know, but I just got to get over deciding maybe prematurely what's worth talking about. I just, you see my Twitter feed. I barely even tweet because yeah. I don't feel like most stuff's worth being said and it's it's kind of a curse honestly well yeah and 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 it's um i mean i get where you're you're coming from as far as you're you know you don't want to feel like you're you know you're just throwing stuff out there you know you know oh, let's let's put some more likes up yeah you know you care about your content and that uh, and it shows it really does um Let's um, kind of as we as we start to wrap things up a little bit. Um, and again, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Um, let's get let's get uh, I guess kind of cover the one of the big topics that's still out there, and that's the um, the big uh, acquisition that's uh, that's going on. Is there any um, I guess thoughts or from you on this acquisition? I mean, do you think it's going to be worth all the headaches that Microsoft seems to be going through now in the long run if 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 everything goes through? I mean, well, I mean, define right. headaches because I see, I just see a lot of people speculating on it's 50 50 if it goes through. Like, nobody fucking knows. I think Microsoft are confident that it will go through. That's why they said everything that they've said so far. Right. And uh, if it doesn't go through, I'd be surprised because most of this acquisition is in the mobile sector uh, where they don't even have close to any kind of monopoly. They don't have a monopoly in gaming in general. That's why it always blew my mind why people act like Call of Duty's got to go to PlayStation. You know, I mean, they are number three after this acquisition. Mm -hmm. They're they're far behind Sony. And um, I just don't see them uh, having a monopoly in any way whatsoever. And while they do say they will continue to bring Call of Duty to, they want to bring that to PlayStation fans or continue to allow them to play the games they love. There's a lot of loopholes in everything they've said so far. Right. And I think right now, the more they say, just shut the fuck up about it. You know, just right. don't say anything because it just sounds dumb. It sounds dumb to tell people that, you know, hey, fans should be allowed to play the games they love with Call of Duty, but with ZeniMax and Bethesda, go fuck yourself. Get an Xbox. <laughs> it's got to be. It's only on Game Pass, bitch. You know, like the double standard and the contradiction between their messaging mm -hmm. is, is bad. And that's why I said in the video, like, I'm going to continue to rail on, just hammer Microsoft over this until they get their messaging cr clear because I don't like being told one thing and being told that Fallout and Elder Scrolls is, you know, that's platforms where only Game Pass exists. But Call of Duty, that all gaming fans should be allowed to enjoy their games where they love them. That makes no sense to me. It's not mm. the same message. And right. it's kind of... It's almost insulting to be told two different things in such a short time period. So I don't think uh, that there are any kind of airtight seals on anything they've said. They've said things right. vaguely for a reason. Vaguely, they have yeah. not specified what modes, how, when, new IPs, new Call of Duty titles down the road. Why did you say, you know, continue? it's the same thing with Minecraft. Continue to enjoy the game they love. They already mm -hmm. have the game. They already love the game. They can enjoy the game. It ain't going nowhere. They're not taking it off nothing. Right. Okay, well, same for Call of Duty. You're not taking Modern Warfare off. They can continue to enjoy the game you love. I just, uh, there's so many red flags and loopholes there that I know that when Microsoft put their foot in the ground, which is rare, they say something that is an airtight statement, like we are just releasing these games on any platform where Game Pass is. That is an airtight statement for yep. that set of games. Why are they not saying that with the other one and saying a bunch of shit that just leaves a bunch of holes? I right. think it's for a reason because everything they say is planned out. Right. So, you know, maybe they are just kind of being vague until the deal is completely done. And then they can be like, ah, here's what we meant. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, Warzone is staying on the platform. Like, all oh, the free to play, we want the users, blah, blah, blah. Like, technically, Call of Duty stays on PlayStation if just Warzone is PlayStation. There's so many loopholes like that that uh, they're not lying, but right. they're also not telling you a damn thing. Right, right, right. Well, one, one cool thing about it, though, is if the deal does go through, that all that first party stuff should come to Game Pass day and date. Will, yeah. Which will be amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we win either way. Even if it does go to a PlayStation, whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, I personally think they will lock as much stuff down as possible because that's how you build an ecosystem. The whole point of this, the only reason they bought any of these studios or made any of them is to fuel this service. It is the number one reason. So, obviously, to do that, the best way is to launch everything on there, build up an awesome catalog of games, right? Common sense. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, day and date for everything that they make, and it makes what is an undeniably phenomenal value for anybody with a brain, unless you are one of those out there that's worried about supporting the developers <laughs> not understanding that developers sign contracts they're happy with and yep. then release. They're not forced at gunpoint. They like the amount of money they're being paid, you know, so that's what they choose to do with it. Yeah. Uncle Phil, once you make you an offer, you can't refuse. Yeah, and first party, you're being paid salary anyway. Like, hey, that that's what makes games so expensive. You're yeah. paying hundreds, if not thousands of developers to build something for years. Salary, each one of them, unless you're a contractor, right? That's right. what makes a game cost $50 million. It's $50 million worth of salary and potentially licensing and assets and then the marketing. But primary bulk is that it's just paying guys to work. And... uh yeah, they don't need to be guaranteed anything for throwing their game in Game Pass. They've been paid to do that work. Throw Okay, now we throw our product, which we paid you to make, you work for us, into Game Pass to fuel what will be a shit ton more subscriptions to Game Pass. And over the long term, just like with Netflix, or do you watch it or not, a lot of us subscribe to Netflix, take the 10 to $20 L every month, just in case we want right. to boot up that app on our TV. And that changes the way we think about consuming content, and it will change the way people think about consuming games. Game Pass is there. Whether you use it or not, it's worth the $10 a month, maybe more, right? And mm-hmm. you'll use it whenever you are prompted to. Exactly. Exactly. I'm, I uh, I did the uh, the all-access mm-hmm. packaging, and I mean, I had heard of Game Pass, knew what it was, but I didn't really think much about it and then i did the all access so i could get one day one got lucky and got the all access deal and it's actually i think a pretty good deal because you're really not out any more money yeah and and it left me the opportunity to buy a playstation 5 outright and then i'm you know making monthly payments on you know my xbox and game pass yeah. but as soon as i started digging into game pass and what was on there like this is pretty cool and then, <laughs> yeah. and then they're like cloud gaming they threw all this stuff in i'm like this is even cooler you know and so mm-hmm. it's like who knows what you know what could happen next i mean if they really make the big i guess leap into uh mobile gaming i mean could you see a you know maybe a game pass mobile kind of mm-hmm. branch off a little bit or something added to that I mean, no that, i think it is know? already that uh oh, okay. game pass uh, x cloud Right is exactly what you're thinking about, and that's why they've invested so much into the UI experience on your phone. Mm. It's not going to be ideal for most of us, but right. most people in the world don't have access to an Xbox. That's the right. biggest market, and that's the one that is untapped. And if every phone is in a, an Xbox or a user for an Xbox, yep. that's what they're really after. And you'd be surprised. People in, you know, that don't have an option to play a console locally, they, you know, this is probably something that blows their mind if they're on a decent connection. You know, I mean, there are a lot of people out there, believe it or not. I mean, it's it's kind of surprising the amount of people that would be willing to play something on xCloud in, on their phone, right? You can already mm-hmm. do it today. Take that and say, this is actually really cool. How This is a, this is a video game thing. Let, okay, so I can actually play this locally on my TV if I buy this box and I can download it. actually mm-hmm. feeds into itself in every single way, be that cross-play, cross-buy, cross-save, and it also fuels console sales. So it's yeah. it's such a long-reaching, self-feeding uh, process that I, I just... And it, the same thing extends with content, DLC, everything. I mean, it all feeds into itself locally, not locally, 
on right. the same platform, not on the same platform, playing with your friends on whatever device you want. If you choose to do so, it feeds into itself, and that's kind of part of his genius. Yeah, uh, agreed, agreed. And it uh, it seems like some of the you know the people that have um, I, people programmers of uh, developers that have you know that have actually put their games in you know game pass seem to have you know i, I seems to be more praise for the service and you know accolades to like you know our game did this much better because we put it on game pass so yeah. that's that's cool and there's actually not been any well. developer right say anything negative about their experience there was a paradox x ceo who said he wished he would have asked for more money for right. the contract he signed. Yeah. But I'm guessing that's only because they got far more engagement than they expected. Right. So it it seems like I guess um some of the you know some of the companies like like well, I guess Phil even said in one of his interviews and I'm paraphrasing cuz I was I'm going to get this exactly right that basically it's a kind of a a case by case basis as to how you know if people want to you know or companies want to be in game pass, you know here's like some of the different ways we can get you involved and it, you know, it may not be the same, you know, cookie cutter, I guess, access or entry uh, for every developer, um, which I mean is if they're that flexible, that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Like royalties. Um, I know the odd world developer was complaining recently because PlayStation now, yeah. uh, you know, which it's their fault. It's, it's, it's the odd world developers fault that they signed a contract that only gave them royalties on a hundred thousand downloads when they actually received 4 million. That is a massive yeah. oversight on your part as the developer, the person with the pen in your hand, you should have asked around or at the worst case scenario, you were just handed that number. Okay. We'll give you a hundred K. We're not willing to go anymore. Then you got the initial payment plus royalties on a hundred thousand downloads, but you still signed that. No one yeah. grabbed your hand and fucking made you sign that. So you can't possibly blame PlayStation now for that. That's all PlayStation Plus, rather. That's right. all on you. I, exactly. I, exactly. And it's, uh, um, and it's a, you know, I've played the game. I downloaded it. <laughs> <laughs> you were one of those bastards yeah, they were mad about. I was, I was, and it, you know, I mean, it was, it was good. It's you okay. Know, I bought it recently great. on Xbox. Yeah. So, so there. Oh, see, look, you're you're giving back to the community. Oh, oh yeah, I have like a thousand games. <laughs> I bet you, I bet you do. <laughs> Take off you. It's uh, <laughs> uh, awesome, um, dealer man. Thank you so much for for being on here today. Um, I really, um, I can't thank you enough. Um, I, I I know you're, yeah, you're you're a pretty modest guy, but. Um, but definitely your show and uh, and the the products you put out um, is uh, is a joy to a lot of people that really enjoy watching it, and we get a lot out of it, and it's entertaining, and I thank you for that. So I appreciate that, and it, it does mean a lot, and I, and I know a lot of people say that kind of shit, but I, I mean that, and um, it's. I think it was it was Pong. I think Pong said, you know, hey, we well, maybe it was Mav. Yeah. who said we started doing this because we watched you guys and i would i would just never know a lot of this stuff not saying that that's why you do it but i'm just saying there's a lot of people that mm -hmm. that do see that stuff and they're like hey i if these fuck faces are doing it, i can do it and that's more than we could ever ask for you know um i i like seeing people do things they love doing and that's why i do this um i do hate seeing some of the the division right. that this stuff causes in terms of you know, for example, I see people that used to watch the show, but then started their own thing and just became haters instantly. You know, that's something that I, I can't stand. And I, I hate it when people get together and they talk to each other about shit they don't know about. And they have all these preconceived notions about how people are because they didn't get the chance to talk to them like we're doing right now. There's yeah. a surprising amount of that going in the community. I know about pretty much all of it. Uh, and I just hate seeing that kind of stuff because we don't look at a lot of the stuff the same way they do. And if only people understood that if you put more in, you're probably going to get more back. You can't mm -hmm. do nothing and expect uh, all of this stuff or to expect to get where you want to be instantly. And furthermore, to act entitled because you're not getting something that you want. You know, I'm just being, as usual, I'm real talk. There's That's a lot good. of guys that, that don't, that don't want to do the work, but want to be, on a platform and, and furthermore it makes it worse they want to be on a platform 
so they can make money. That's the worst right. fucking reason to get into this. That's right. shit that I can't fucking stand. If you do this for only money, fuck off. There's too many people like that in the community that yeah. don't actually give a shit about none of this and do this or want to do this just for money. You can make money, sure. But if that's your motivator, that's somebody I don't even want in the community. Honestly. Right. That's uh, very true. Uh, true words couldn't couldn't have been said because I know there's definitely people out there you can you can tell that they 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 feed off the greed as it were yeah or they just or they're just or they just think they should be getting this or be doing these numbers it's they're not super they're not well they're not self-aware at all and you know that's the first thing i'm doing if something ain't going well or if a video ain't doing well and even if i put fucking 14 hours into that video and, and i'm like fuck that sucks i wanted a lot of people to see that there's a reason I didn't monetize my channel to 23,000 subscribers. I could have, you know, I could have been making money on that on that thing for forever before that. Right. But I decided once I put in, um, I started putting in more work. It was actually taken away from other things in my life. That's when I would go ahead and monetize and, and actually look into doing more of this. It was not anywhere near a first resort. But again, you know, self awareness is important. I think, and and that's why I think it's important people stay humble and connected. Because, you know, be aware of what you do well, but never give yourself the benefit of the doubt on shit that, you know, you shouldn't. You know, there's too many people right. that, that think they <laughs> they don't understand why their shit ain't doing well, but they never bothered to put in the effort to make a single fucking thumbnail. You know, right. it's, it's that type of shit, right? So I just see that stuff a lot, man, and uh, I hate seeing it because there's a lot of really capable uh, creators, potentially, or, or podcasters that hold themselves back that way and don't look at things that way, you know? I, exactly. I, I when I uh, you know I guess the start of the pandemic, I've, I've watched you know YouTube and stuff for you know, for a while. But when the pandemic started, and I was like, you know, okay, now you guys are all work from home, and I was like, oh my god, you know, let's let's see what's on YouTube. Let's see, you know, and then and you know, and I and to be honest with you, I, I jumped around and watched some of the staples for me at the time were like IGN, and, and I was mm-hmm. like, and after like a couple of weeks of that at the beginning i was just like you know they their perspective was not on board with mine and so i just started looking around you know putting in searches for you know xbox content or this content and then that's how i came across your show and boom show and several others um and i'm like you know so that's you know that's what i kind of gravitated to but i did watch a few um you know people that were um, I won't name anybody, but like podcasts that were, you know, their thing was, you know, you know, give us another super chat. You know, let's talk about this. Why don't yeah. get another super chat in 10 minutes? I'm ending the stream. I'm like, well, in the really? stream. I, mean, I feel like you have to, somebody like that, I feel like you need to name, honestly. I mean, that sounds like a super fuck face. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Anymore. That's so uh, cringy to me, man. Like, yeah, if I hear somebody saying that shit, I am. Uh, my my ass cheeks took a bite out of my chair. I'm cringing so hard. And, pro- and and another reason, like I like to record these. You know, there's no. I mean, yes, it's nice in like being on a show where you get questions and stuff in, and like your show where you get your super chats and stuff like that. That's cool because people sometimes can get. You know, you might get a little bit of an of a of an input of their perspective on your conversation, and they enjoy the interaction. You know, which is cool. Um, but here is like I just you know. I just want to, I don't want to mess with any of that kind of stuff. I just want to talk, you mm-hmm. know, to, you know, to the content uh, creator and, uh, and figure out, you know, what, uh, you know, what they're all about and what's, uh, you know, what, um, you know, what makes them enjoy what they're doing. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think that there are benefits to being, you know, I, you could ask anybody in my, <laughs> in my <laughs> chat, you know, I used to not even read half of the super chats, but <laughs> I really started feeling pretty fucking bad, so I try to at least knock every one of them out now and, and do better at that because, yeah. it, it, again, you know, I want to do it at the right time because, again, we're not doing that stuff for the money, right. but if somebody's going to super chat $100 fucking dollars, the least I can do yeah. for them supporting the show is yeah, nice. uh, read what they're saying and kind of uh, give them some, some feedback on what they're saying. Yeah. And I think, you know, a live show is cool because you can get the community in on some of the questions or some of the... Oh, yeah. Some of the, you know, I feed off the chat so much, and especially in weeks where topics are down, 
uh, mm-hmm. we can make some really phenomenal shows because of the energy of the chat's bringing some of the i some of the things they're saying, the ideas, the topics. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun, man. So I think you're good either way. You want to do a pre recorded show or not? There's a lot of stuff you can feed off with live. But yeah. uh, you know, you're just starting, right? So in yeah. five years, you never know what the hell you'll be doing. You know, just right. As long as you're doing something you love, it's all that matters. You can be putting thousands of hours into this, and uh, you definitely don't want to be doing something you don't love. Right, exactly. Well, I, you know, most people, well, well, some people don't now, but um, I used to be a, um, a radio DJ and program director for a rock radio station, uh, and that was years ago. But uh, and it was a lot of fun, and I kind of missed being on the mic and talking and conversations and stuff like that, uh, you know, with a, with an audience. Um, but it, um, you know, and then. GameStop paid a lot more money than being on the radio. So yeah, <laughs> I yeah. became a manager at GameStop for 12 <laughs> years. And then they, you know, they ended up, uh, the mall I was in died. So they closed that store and the closest other store to transfer store to was a, like an hour away. And I'm like, I'm doing something else. Got a job at the bank. Really enjoy it. Now it's work from home. Really love it. You know, Hmm. I can work at a bank and be off every holiday <laughs> you know, Columbus yeah. Day is a holiday. I get paid for it. Hell you don't yeah. got to drive nowhere. You know, you spend money on, you know, gas mm-hmm. and you get to do this uh, in the, in the exactly. downtime. Exactly. So, yeah. So it's uh, it's kind of nice. But um, anyway, dealer, uh, thank you so much for being on here. If you don't mind, uh, tell everybody where they can where they can find you. Everything is going to be in the show notes, but it's, sometimes it's better if they hear it, too. Um, yeah. I mean, if you uh, <laughs> if you want to <laughs> if you want to watch some videos on video game consoles with buttons on them and stuff you can <laughs> type in dealer gaming on youtube and if you want to follow me on twitter at dealer underscore gaming i i space i i i i space dealer space i i for xbox live that's the easiest place to reach me at um and yeah i just want to thank everyone who took the time to watch this and i say it all the time on my show i don't know um maybe i don't know some of these guys uh, you know in your, your neck of the woods there's the community is always bigger than we think Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, just thanks for uh, powering the shows, man. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you for, for being on here. And um, I can tell everybody that's uh, that's watching, they definitely, you want to make sure that you go to Dealer Gaming, uh, search for it on YouTube, and uh, you'll definitely find him. Make sure you not only uh, subscribe to his channel, it's free to subscribe, by the way, just <laughs> click a little button, yeah, and then yeah. there's a little bell icon, make sure you click that, that way you don't miss any of his shows, which are every Tuesday night, pretty much and uh you will i guarantee you <laughs> you will be entertained maybe for, uh, hey wait maybe we have trash you know hey we have trash shows sometimes you know i'm i'm a most <laughs> critic here but uh the, the main thing i try to push on the channel is the videos right because yeah. that's what i love doing i love building the videos and showing um all this different stuff and and all these cool gameplay in 4k and talking about the latest topics and working my own just the music selection alone is one of the first things I think about when I'm building a video and just, you know, some videos are better than others, but that's, that's really what I love doing the most. And the podcast is, is definitely something that we do as well. But yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, again, you know, and also if you're new here, because maybe, you know, I've tweeted this out or something, subscribe to yeah. these guys and, and leave a like and uh, let them know your feedback as well. And, and shout out to everyone all the real people in the comments, because we do got some bottom motherfuckers in this community. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> a, a lot of adult, adult ones that just want to jump in and, uh, and and leave these love lines for people. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, it's some weird shit, man. It is. It is. Well, you got um, you got one of the one of the best moderators. Um, was a big. I don't want to say it wrong because his name is long. Lethal Papa. Lethal Papa. Yeah, he yeah. is. He is awesome. He crushes people. <laughs> Does, with the hammer of truth he does but uh but it but it makes your you know chat enjoyable too because you know if there's somebody being too stupid see ya wouldn't want to meet you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Out of here. but yeah man thanks for having me on seriously and just uh just keep grinding thank you sir i appreciate that and uh thanks for everybody who uh watched it today uh outbreak gamers is uh we can find us at outbreakpodcast.com plus a list with all the shows we're gonna have more content creators on here lots of lots of good ones uh if this is your first one check it out we've got a lot of others that have uh that we've uh, we've done almost 20 episodes now so so definitely please uh, take a take a look at those and uh thank you for watching outbreak gamers <laughs>